them Irish Scouse lungs and me, so I'm ready to punch all night. Me, Molly McCann! You got it! Oh, wow. No way! Wow. Jack Comanson with another submission! Everything I do in my life is working for this goal to become the best in the world. Jack the Joker Hermanza! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. Listen to me, we're out of here. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Today we're going to be joined by Jack Hermanson and also Molly McCann. I think Molly jumped in with on the potty, uh, Patty Pimblet uh, interview briefly. I don't know if we've had her um, as a full-on guest, so it'll be nice to have her. I, I had her and her crew as a guest when she was with our good friend of the show, Dean Thomas, and they visited my academy, Sarah BJJ. Oh, Stroh. okay. They visited it, you know, one time more than you did, you know? And, well, I've uh, never officially been invited. Well, well, I'm just saying they're across the pond. I didn't really invite them either, but they, they popped in and I, I appreciated it. And we, I'm not attacking you. No, I hope I, not. I love you, but I would love for you to visit. I would love to. I, oh, oh, my students would get, I wouldn't even tell them. Also, you'd appear like a little ninja and they go, oh, you, that's your, he's so popular. That's Jim Norton. And they'd go, and what they, is this fat, no training kid doing here? They wouldn't want to see me. No, they, they know that me and you are like a, a superhero team on this thing. So, and they'd be excited. But anyway, they were also excited to see Molly McCann and uh, Dean Thomas. And so we went out to eat afterwards. Where'd you go? Well, you know what it is? My, my buddy Abe knows. He, 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 when, when he goes out with us, he puts out like the whole Godfather's plan, yeah. man. It's, we go to the restaurant, it's the fucking appetizers. It's not, what do you want? It's what don't you want? Right. We're, getting, right we're, getting, we're getting it. I tell him to calm down. And he fucking goes nuts, and I like it because we have a good time, man. Those guys, Dean Thomas was, dude, he asked Dean Thomas. He had a blast. Well, he asked Molly. I guarantee she'll remember the food we had because it was fucking delicious. Yeah, she's fighting Hannah Goldie this uh, Saturday. The opening fight of that card is Paul Craig against Vulcan Uzdemir. That's a really, really good card. Um, of course, I, uh, Curtis Blades against Tom Aspinall is the, is the main fight. Uh, Hermanson, Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis has been on fire. That's the co-main. A great card, man. Jimmy. Yeah, buddy. What do I like about Paul Craig? Now, I know you're just going to say, oh, let me guess, he's jujitsu. Uh. You're not going to say that. that. Was that but I was, easy, actually. You were going to say that. Yes. And it's not that, it's not that you're wrong. Right. But this is, what I, this is what I really do like about him. Yeah. Is that other jujitsu artists, guys, uh, jujitsu fighters, jujitsu based fighters, Damian Maya, um, Give me even even uh, 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 Ronnie Yaya, Gilbert <laughs> yeah. Burns, Gilbert Burns, yes, and they are very dangerous. Olivera, so they're well rounded, but really they're dangerous. Where they get on top of you, they're gonna strangle you. They get in your back. Right. They're gonna strangle you. They get on top of you. They're gonna get mounted. They get these dominant positions. But what I like about Paul Craig. He's a guard puller in the U.S. Usually that's a no no. Yeah. Usually that's frowned upon. But he's so fucking dangerous. That he'll go to guard and you're like, you're automatically worried for the guy on top. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I get excited. And, and to be honest, I don't know if it's because I'm a Braveheart fan. I like when he's, I like his accent. I like when he's on the scale, when his face is painted. It reminds me exactly out of something out of Braveheart. Yeah. And uh, just a couple of reasons. Oh, Another great fight on that card, by the way, Nikita Krylov against uh, Gustafson, both coming off sub losses. Uh, it's funny, uh, Krylov's uh, lost to Paul Craig. Uh, that was yeah. his last loss in submission. And of course, uh, Verdum beat Gustafson in, uh, I guess that was in 2020. That was his last fight. So, that was. Yeah. Jimmy, Molly, Molly McCann is waiting for us, and I want you to ask her about the food and to see if she remembers about it. Okay. You don't have to. I can ask No, no, no. Her. I want to ask her because she'll be. Right, well, Imagine she's like, what? Yeah. Where'd we, where'd we go, Olive Garden?
Hey, Molly. What's up, Molly? Name, Molly, buddy? put something on. We're doing an interview. Put something on. How oh, are you? Molly, Molly, this is a little. Now you I'm relax be, exactly gonna, as you are. Don't listen you. to Matt. Don't listen I'm to not, Matt. I'm you just be comfortable. One sec. I'm just out the shower. Hey, Molly, this is not your OnlyFans fucking thing, all right? What don't a terrible bit of advice. <laughs> what did she say? She said, don't call me Hannah don't Goldie. Don't call me Hannah Goldie. <laughs> oh, I would like fuck. to apologize, Molly, to my, for my co-host and his terrible advice. Um, sorry, sorry I've, I've just, just finished training and I had a quick bath. Here we were, we're all good. Virus, meatball, Molly, we're good. Molly, meatball, let me ask you. Do you remember? I, don't, Matt, I, know I was going to ask her. Go ahead, Jimmy. Because I, I, I want to know if she remembers. Have you ever been to Long Island? I went to some amazing Italian restaurants and I had the best meatballs of my life. I had the best pizza, ravioli, alfredo chicken, um, the lamb. What else? Jimmy. What, what was the bar called again? What was the restaurant called? That was Matteo's. On Matteo's. Bike in Island. And they had no Fanta orange and I said, can I have a Fanta, please? And they didn't have none. And they ran down to a store like a block down and brought 12 cans of Fanta back. Fanta, F-A-N-T-A? F -A -N -T -A? Listen, this is funny. She wanted orange soda. She wanted Fanta. They didn't have it. No. My buddy Abe, my buddy Abe goes there a lot. And he just goes, hey, listen, he brought it over. They said no. He said, you said no. He goes, bring them over here. He goes, hey, let's find us some Fanta. And they found, but Molly, did they find you Fanta or no? Listen, because like it was like he was gonna get shot if he didn't go and get me so <laughs> it was like we, kiss my <laughs> ring, go and get the fanta now. We had a good time. We had a good time, Molly. That was fun. I know you treated me well that day, boss. Uh, well, when I visit listen, when I'm over there, when I visit you one day, don't take me to no shitty fucking place in Liverpool, wherever the fuck. I want some nice food. I, I know you and you. I know you and Patty know where all the good spots are. Yeah. From one meatball to another, I will take you and treat you to the best. Now, can you replace Fanta with sun-kissed orange soda if Fanta's not available, or are you brand loyal? I can do that. I can even maybe do Sprite with orange juice if a needs must. <laughs> you love orange soda? I love orange soda. As much as Paddy loves Coca-Cola. I love it. I can't drink soda. it. It makes my teeth my teeth feel weird after drinking regular soda. Like I can't eat sugar anymore. I mean, it's not a great conversation, but, but I just can't drink I've regular got, Coke. I've got new teeth now, so it's all good. <laughs> Do you, you have great teeth? What, 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 how new are they? Mm, three weeks. Wow. <laughs> all of them are new? Well, it's just composite bonding. 20 new teeth. Wow. Now, is that comfortable? Does it feel natural? Yeah, they just add a layer on. Mate, my teeth were like, from getting punched in the face for the last 20 years and like grappling and taking headbutts, like they were just chipped. So they've just been nicely filed in. Yeah, they look great. I mean, they look they look uh, really nice. Are you looking at yourself in the mirror more now and just smiling and going, fuck, these look awesome? I feel like an American. <laughs> like a movie star. With that, good with that good dental plan. The English aren't really known for their teeth. In a good way. No, it's like, it's a bit rough, isn't it? It yeah. is. Now, now, listen, Hannah, we, we made a little, you made a little joke about her OnlyFans, whatever it was. She is dangerous, though, and she is pretty well known. So this is like, this is your most high profile fight to date, no? How, how do you feel about that? Matt, I've, re I've prepared for her. Like, she's an Olympic wrestler, Olympic judoka, black belt jiu-jitsu, and world champion boxer. You can't go from winning with that fashion that I did to just thinking that the rest of life is gonna be easy and you can coast off your previous work because let me tell you something, the work only gets harder. You've got to train harder because you can't, what got me here won't get me there. Do you know? So right. I went and trained with Jay Flo in San Diego, I've worked, been nonstop on the grappling. As I haven't grappled as long as I've been striking, but every fight I've shown, my grappling's got better. So I really think this is the hardest fight of my life. 
but I think that I am that well equipped. I can still get her out there and one because I've just worked so hard. Remember that one, Matt? Worked so hard on my fight IQ. She, Jimmy, she said work, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Work. Work. <laughs> When, when did you actually, I know you worked at uh, like uh, at a subway. When was the last time you had to work a day job? Like what was, what was it like when you finally were able to leave that last regular job? It's a second win in the UFC. Um, day job, I would just say coaching full time. I find it really hard being a true mixed martial artist and not coach. Um, but I still do, to be honest. I'm still the national coach or a national coach of our English um, amateur team. Um, I just love to teach, to be honest with you. But maybe 2019, I stopped working a full-time job um, and just completely committed myself to to trying to get my hands on the UFC goals one day. Does it, uh, does coaching kind of, it, it takes away from your time, but do you feel like at least you're in the business, like you're doing what you love? It's, it, it doesn't feel like a real job because it's it's something that's kind of tied into what you're doing in UFC. If you look at the likes of me and Paddy, we are our city. We live for Liverpool and we just want to give back to our community. And I think if you can help change a child's life uh, or a young, like a cadet or a junior or even an adult, then you're always going to try and do that. And, to pay it forward means more than anything. And I think um, when you do good things, good things come back to you. And obviously there's been moments when you're in fight camp where you can't commit to as much as what you'd like to, but there's, especially when the downtime's on, I'll always try and help. And it keeps you, it keeps you switched on because when you're teaching, you're not getting the basics wrong and the fundamentals is what wins your fights. Like that. That's good karma. That's everything you're talking about is good karma. How long have you known Patty? Because I like your relationship. It's very brother sisterly, and it's very. You guys have good chemistry. You guys are good on camera. I like it. How long do you guys know each other for? Say, so I walked into the gym eleven years ago, Maybe. but I didn't. But I didn't start until nine years ago. So we've done about we fought on about seven or eight cards together, Matt. Oh. And since since Cage Warriors, it was always the same. Me and him would steal the show, <laughs> and it's not like it's not like we're trying to take anyone else's limelight. Yeah. It's just kind of like I don't know, like if you put a light bulb on in the middle of the night, a fly would fly to it. That's like what the fans are like. We're like the light, and people are just drawn to it. So it's we're not trying to. I was literally saying to people, when are you going to get bored of us? Because like, how long can you be intrigued for? But isn't it great that you have a personality, though? Isn't it? I know it's a weird thing to say, but you do. Some people are like talking to a fucking plant, yeah. <laughs> and because they are, it makes you and Patty shine that much more. Like, you know what I mean? For better, you guys are. You, listen, you're naturally pretty funny, Meatball. You are. Yeah. Every time I see you, you call me a Meatball. I like <laughs> you. You're very funny naturally. And where does that come from? We always. Like, were you into humor as a kid? Were you into any, like, comedies? Were you always silly? I don't know. It's just the same as you, lad. We come from, like, hard work. And when people don't have money and don't have a lot, what you have is humor and love. And you have to make the best out of a bad situation. So most people from Liverpool are funny bastards. Do you know what I mean? Like, we are Definitely. funny fuckers. Or at least we think we are. People just laugh at us, you know? But, um... Yeah, I don't try to be funny. It just happens. Did you fight a lot growing up? Uh, what kind of a neighborhood was it you grew up in? One of the the worst crime and gang areas in Liverpool. Um, I didn't. I was a bit of a shitbag. I was <laughs> quiet, reserved. I was very shy. I grew up like with parents who were addicted to drugs and alcohol, and I wasn't in a stable home. I'd be here, there, everywhere, and I was just quite scared always and always on, like, red alert, like, what's going to happen next? Can I trust this person? Blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't until I started playing sports. I played soccer at a professional level. I was an amateur boxer and won the national championships. But it wasn't until I transitioned to MMA where 
like the jujitsu, one love, one team, all that kind of thing. Um, just gave me the confidence to be me. And like, I'm not sure if you are away because of how confident I probably come across now, but I didn't come out as gay till I was 25 because I was that scared. It wasn't until I was like within MMA that I felt I could be myself. And I think the more you see me in the public eye and being accepted through like UFC and MMA, the more I am me and the more comfortable that I am. So it's been a long journey, to be honest, lads. You said when you came out as gay. Yeah. You, you said came out as gay. How, how old were you when you knew? Like when you said, hey, I, th- I think this is who I am. 25. Oh, before that, you weren't, you weren't, you weren't sure. No, I was like strong Irish Catholic family. Everyone would just be like, shut up, you little fag, or speak like very derogatory towards gay. So I would see it as like, I wouldn't even entertain that fact. I'd run away from it. I'd be like, oh, if people speak about gay, it means bad. So I was just like, no, I'll just focus on sports, thanks. And, um, I fell in love with my best friend by accident. <laughs> and then here I am. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> How did you tell them? Your family? Was that a hard conversation? I couldn't. I couldn't. Um, my mum said, are you in love? Are you with Ruth? And I just burst out crying. She's going, please don't be um, embarrassed. I'm sorry if it makes the family like um, embarrassed and it's unhonorable, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, Shut the fuck up. She went, I was more surprised you brought a boy home than you are you telling me gay. And I was just like, <laughs> and I went, know. she went, you, you've just made it up to be this hard thing. I went, no, I'm just on this interview, lads. Oh, come and say hello. Guess who it is, lads? Yeah. Hey, your how you doing, man? Patty, oh my oh, God. Hi. It's so fucking weird, dude. He, he's deflated. Patty, you look great, yeah. dude. Very skinny again. Very skinny look, again. Yeah, you look in great shape. I'm excited for both you. It's so exciting. Hey, it's t- two days and then he'll be a fat bastard again. Someday I can be fat again. Yeah. It's amazing that I believe the cheeks will come back. Good. Oh, yeah, the cheeks will be back in a big Ham- way. Especially Ham- when I'm back in America in August, they'll be back. I'll, leave you I'll come and pop into your room in a bit in a minute, lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but what's it called? I couldn't tell everyone. I went, Mum, can you just fucking tell everyone I cannot be asked? And then I had like an 82 year old grandma ring me up and go, Molly, if you're happy, I'm happy. Now, this was the most Irish Catholic of us all. So I was just like, Oh, okay. And right. Don't get me wrong. Like, I can be in the gym and like hear banter and not take offense, to be honest. Do you know what I mean? But, um, What's it called? Lad, I'm... Oh, is that my... Okay, cheers. Losing me flow, aren't I, lad? Sorry. Nah, yeah. So your grandmother called you and, that, and, and it was better than you thought it would be? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, who the fuck cares? But when you're growing up, if you have an insecurity and everyone keeps attacking you with it, you kind of... It scars you. It scars you in a bad way, but... Maybe that's why I fucking punch people in the head so hard now. <laughs> <laughs> All that pent up anger that you just kind of save when you need it. Yeah, of course. Like, I'm not an aggressive person. I'm not a nasty person. But the second I'm in that cage, fuck me, I'm ready to kill. <laughs> well, hey, man, we're looking forward to it. Yes. And that, by the way, that last, your last spinning elbow knockout over uh, Caroline, it was, it was really, when that happened, did you feel like, I, I I know this is going to land where I need it to land, or is that, that something you thought of just kind of as a strike, or was that more as calculated as it looked? I thought it was going to make space for me to put a second phase attack. So I thought spin, wobble it, create a frame, and then just fucking go again. That first round, I was like the Matrix. It was like... Drrr. And then the second round, I took the took Luana down, just showed on the floor that I've grown. Um, took me time, even when the crowd was chanting my name. I thought, no, I'm just gonna, sh- I'm gonna prove to everyone I can make this go wherever I need it to go. And then in the last round, I thought, like you've saved your lungs, just go for it. And 
look, let's be honest, if you've beat someone 2-0, you know they have to come to finish. So I knew she'd have a minute or two in the tank and then I knew I'd be able to, to let go. I'm just, I've been in and out of the gym since I was 10. Um, even though I like to drink beer, I train every day. It's my life and I've just got lungs, I've got commitment. I've got a fucking work ethic that cannot be matched by any woman I've ever met. And um, I was just ready for that moment. And what I've said to everyone this fight week, lads, is that means nothing coming into this fight. So everyone keeps saying, oh, but what about that elbow? It means fuck all because an elbow three months ago is not going to win me a fight right. on Saturday. Really. So, like, that was left in March. I'm ready to show the world. If I want to fly an armbar, can I put one on? Like, Matt, you have, I've, heard, I've listened to this quite a lot. And even in defeat, you've, you've spoke highly about, like, where you can see my progression sometimes in my offensive grappling. Um, and it was just about working a little bit better on my defensive, like wrestling takedowns, etc., and all that. Well, more against the cage, but I went away, learned some judo, quite a lot of it. I've implemented it this whole camp. So if Goldie can't take the punches and wants the clinch, she's fucked. <laughs> I like it. It's all technical. And then, you know, she goes, <laughs> she's fucked. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> I didn't say it better myself, Molly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I've had to fight people. My last two fights had a nine inch reach and a 10 inch reach advantage. This wow. time, lads, I've got a one inch reach advantage on here. So I don't have to make it a firefight. I don't have to make it a dog fight. I get to be clinical. And this is, people say like the last fight was my coming out part. You know, I believe this will be because. I get to just be flow. I just get to stand in there and I get to just be free. Like, lads, you'll see me walk to that cage, take the shackles off and go and fucking... Just go and live 20 years of mixed martial arts. Go and enjoy that moment. Go and listen to that crowd. Sing my fucking name and just make everyone proud. All right, Molly. Well, it was great having you on. Uh, good luck on Saturday. And uh, you're really... You're fun to watch. And uh, we're happy we finally got a chance to have you on like for a real interview. Thanks, lads. I'll be over in um, in August. So I, uh, if I'm in New York, I'll pop and see you, lad, Matt. You got it, a hundred percent. Not don't bring Dean Thomas. No, I'm only oh, no. kidding. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's I also fucking right. love Dean, don't I? Like this, Jim. Did you know the the first person who beat me in the UFC was Gillian Robertson, and me and Dean ever since then. Well, actually, I went to corner Gillian once. This was a mad one. I was going to corner Jillian because I had a fight and I lost and I stayed in Las Vegas and she needed more people to train with. I went, I'll go in your corner if you want. And she was like, really? I went, yeah, I'll train with you. Be a light body for you. And she was like, cool. And then Dean was like, let's go for pizza meatball. And we had a pizza and then that was it. Yeah. Thick as thieves. <laughs> he's, a good, he's a good man, Dean Thomas. <laughs> yeah, he's... You just only have to look at his Instagram and what he does for other people. He's not making loads of money helping everyone else, but without people like him, the the people who need the help don't get the help. Do you know what I mean? And, he, and he's good on the mic too. They they have Dean pop in and do like literally one sentence, two sentence, like coach's corner things, and he's great. Like it, he stands out when he jumps on mic, so he probably has some kind of a broadcasting future if he wants it. 100%. Yeah, and he looks about 31. Have you seen him when he, he has his fucking his hair done, his like whiskers shaved? Yes, well, the I'm whiskers like, are shaved. The whiskers are shaved. Yeah, when they come <laughs> in, he looks like he's 60 because they're a little gray. Yeah, but when yeah, they're yeah, shaved, yeah. he looks like he's, you know, 21. Yep. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> right, lads. Good talking to you, Molly. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. All right, have a great fight. Peace out, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, man. Have your last fights been been at the Apex? Your last three fights? Uh, I have two at the Apex and one at Fight Island, so no one, no one with the crowd. How nice is it to finally? Do you have any feelings about walking, like actually doing a walkout in front of a crowd again? Does is it making you feel like excited, or is there a little bit of nerves there, or anything at all? 
No, it uh, both both actually. It, it excites me, and I know it's gonna be you know a little bit more tension and nerves to it as well. But I'm ready for that, and I'm looking forward to it. I, I I'm sorry, Matt. Well, I wondered too. Did fighting in like the Apex to Fight Island without a crowd does that? Because sometimes you know fans get like restless if someone's up against the cage too long, or or you know guys are struggling for position. Fans will boo and. Uh, does that change the way somebody fights at all when they have a, a crowd booing as opposed to just kind of doing what you want to do in, in an apex where no one is going to boo? Um, maybe it, it might it might give you some urgency. It's possible actually that that you can feel that. But uh, you know, if you are disciplined, you will just uh, stay stay to your plan. You know, you don't want to do anything uh, stupid to lose a position or anything like that. So. Uh, in my mind, I'm going to stay disciplined, but you never know how you're yeah. going to react. <laughs> but I'm not planning to, to get any boost. <laughs> Especially no. now when I'm, not, when I'm not fighting Darren anymore. You know, when I was fighting Darren Till, I, I knew that everybody would boo me. Yeah, oh, but, so. So. so, I mean, so when did they change the opponent? It was Darren Till first. When, yeah. when, when, did, they change, they, when did they change it to Chris Curtis? A couple of weeks ago. Wow. Okay. Now, yeah. is it, is it, I mean, look, it's, it's not like it's a, it, it is a change obviously, but uh, you know, this, do you, do you like that this, this Curtis has a lot of hype behind him? I mean, he's got some nice wins under his belt. I mean, this could really, you know, uh, take that train off the tracks. You yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, the, you know, especially fans who know, knows this game, they know that, you know, he is on a, Eight fight win streak. He has won all of his fight in U fights in UFC. He has like what, 29 and six or something in record. It's a great record. Yeah. A lot of wins, and uh, you know he's a really solid dude. So uh, if I can put him away, uh, I definitely feel like I'm proving myself. And he stopped up. Brendan Allen. I mean, he stopped Brendan Allen, and yeah. he stopped uh, Phil Hawes. Uh, yeah. Vieira, he beat by decision, but uh, yeah, he has looked incredible since he's gotten to the UFC. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but also you got listen. I mean, your confidence should be super high. Your last fight, you lost to Sean Strickland, but it was a split decision, mind you. Yeah. Split decision. Yeah. Before that, you beat Edmund uh, Shabazian, who's a stud. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, and then you lost and you fought Marvin, which are, uh, was a hell of a fight. So it's not like, you know, you you oh man, I'm coming off a loss. I, dude, yeah. shit. I mean, yeah. I don't know, man. I. I when you see this, when you get a, a change of opponent, and I know how it is, but yeah. for yourself, are, are you just biting nails and like, like who, who are they going to give me? I want to see the name, or is it whoever? I mean, what is it? And then when you got the name, how do we feel? Uh, the first thing is that I asked you, see, do you have anybody in the rankings available? Because that's that's who you want to fight, right? You want to fight sure. rank guys. And uh, but when they said that they didn't have that, the first suggestion uh, from the UFC was uh, Chris Curtis, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, man, that, that's the dude. If I'm not gonna fight anybody in the ranking, that that's the dude right now. So that that is definitely the right uh, opponent, and uh, I've been preparing for Southpaw, and uh, he's also Southpaw, so that was also a good uh, coincidence. How long have you been training with uh, Shemaev? No, he, he just he just came in, uh, you know. Uh, uh, I, we've been training a couple of three times together, I think. Uh, he just came in to to our gym and uh, and uh, stayed for a week. So um, yeah, we don't train regularly together, but we have been training uh, a few times. And how, how was that experience? Because a lot of people seem to want to train with him lately. How was that? Uh, it's good. It's good. I was happy, you know, when he showed up at uh, our doorstep uh, because I did. All oh, right, I got a new, great training partner to have here for a week. So I, I saw it as an opportunity. So and he's uh, he's good, and we got some good training. Now you don't talk about stuff in the training room. We all know that, Jimmy. Yes. But they did have a wrestling match. Everybody's like, "Oh, he beat him in a grappling match. Wrestling, not submission. Wrestling. Oh man, thank you. Yeah, I hope, definitely. I hope. I hope when he showed up, you guys had some some matches and got to roll a little bit and be like, hey, you see what I can fucking do? No, I'm only kidding. Like, <laughs> no, but at least maybe you got to, I don't know, have a little bit more yeah. grappling time with him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we did it all. We, we wrestled, we grappled, we did MMA, uh, stand-up sparring. Uh, so uh, we did it all. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, 
He's definitely good, and uh, I'm good too. Yeah. <laughs> da Darren Till, this is the fourth out of fifth fight he's had to pull out of. Is rescheduling that something you would want to do, or does that make you nervous when a guy has a couple of fights in a row? Like there could be a nagging injury, or uh, maybe they're just one of those guys that gets hurt a lot in training, but does that make you hesitant to reschedule it? Uh, definitely a third time I would be hesitant uh, to do it again. You know, now, like, the first time when we were supposed to fight, uh, or I actually, I wanted to fight back, in, like, many years ago. I wanted to fight. The UFC wanted to fight. Darren said no to the fight. And then we got booked. And then he injured himself and pulled out. And now when we got booked for this time, uh, fight, uh, we were asked to do the main event on this card. And he said no to that. And that was, like, I'm just like, what? Does he... Say, say, who does say no to a, a main, main event, you know? So he wanted a co-main, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, or he, he wanted probably to be even lower on the card. I don't know. But, uh, so that was like the indications were no weren't uh, that good, you know. So I felt like, yeah, man, uh, I, I don't have a good feeling about this. He, he might pull for, from this fight, and he didn't even announce the fight ever in his social media or anything like that. Wait, he turned down a main event to do co to fight co-main. Is that? Do you think that's over the amount of rounds? I mean, do you think that's what that is? Uh, either that, or or like the the pressure to be like to carry the card, or you know, uh, um, one that's, or two. That's awesome. I know what I like about Jack saying this because he's like, yeah, I'm saying it because it's true. And yeah. hey, you want to fight about it? That's what he can say yeah. to him. Jimmy, yeah. If Darren <laughs> goes, hey, that's not. Jack can smile and go, hey, you want to fucking fight about it? <laughs> right, Jack? Let's yep. do it. Let's do it. I'm here. <laughs> Jack, I mean, listen, if smiling, who smiles more? Maybe smiling Sam Alby? Who's that? Be either son? They're like, they're like right there. Yeah, Look yeah, probably. He's always smiling. <laughs> Even yeah. in the stage. You you wonder if it that did, that did that bother you when you found out it could have been a main or like when, when you what do you think of when that happens like that this is a person and again I know it's not about Darren Till I'm just curious as a fighter when you hear that do you think this is a person that might have lost some confidence? I just thought it was super weird. I'm just like you know you have you have opportunity to to do what everybody wants to you know you wanna uh, be the main event. Uh, the, the the whole card is built around you, you know, you get extra money, all of that shit, you know, uh, and you go, oh, no, thank you. I, I rather step down the level, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a crazy thing to do. So it was weird. Yeah, because even when you're doing like the main event, you get, they have to do more press, more interviews, but even the co-main has to do a certain amount of interviews and press. So it's probably not even that big of a difference in press obligation. No, pro pro probably not. Uh, so I don't know if... It, it, more about the pressure of, of carrying the car or or if it was about the rounds but that's a bad indication to your opponent when just like nah i ra rather have three rounds <laughs> you know? and it's pressure but fighting is pressure yeah and yeah. You, one day you want to get a championship belt you don't think that's gonna be fucking pressure of yeah, exactly. right jack right yeah yeah it doesn't get oh, like if, if you want to go somewhere you you want pressure that's what you want that's what you want jimmy yeah nobody wants to lose at home like in their hometown obviously like you know like i felt bad for Derek lewis i was the second round i think he stopped in houston but it happens sometimes i mean you know i guess you got to take that chance if you're gonna because right if you're gonna fight for a belt you know there's gonna be a, a shitload of pressure on you no matter where you are yeah 100 percent. that's what this game is about you know that pressure is always there you can't escape it yeah, are you? Does it mean anything to you to not be fighting a guy, fighting in his hometown? Um, again, I know it's just a crowd, but does that mean anything to you either way? Well, uh, I, I, it's probably just a positive thing, you know. To at least people are not gonna boo me when I get out there. But I did hear that Darren is gonna coach uh, uh, my opponent. So, uh, you know, that, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I heard that uh, Darren Teal is going to be in, in, in Chris Curtis' uh, corner. Oh, yeah. So, what? Yeah, I was just like, man, that's rude. First you pull from the fight and then you go to my opponent and, uh, and corner him. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he just right? wants, again, maybe he just realizes that you're a difficult uh, guy to deal with and would prefer not to have to deal with you if he doesn't. Yeah, maybe. I know it's gonna be only he knows that, uh, you know. But I, 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 
of course, I, I believe that he has uh, trouble with his uh, injuries and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, but um, yeah, maybe he shouldn't have accepted so the fight not, in the first place. I don't... You're not saying he's a jacket holder. You're not saying you had a fight with him and he's like, I, uh, uh, Curtis, I'll hold your jacket. You go fight him. And then and he'll be, he's, you know, he's not doing that. He's injured. <laughs> he's injured. <laughs> he's injured. He's injured. Yeah. But uh, he'll be hobbling in the corner. But yeah. listen, <laughs> hey, man, one day maybe you guys will dance, but you do have a nice dance partner this weekend. Yeah. The one thing about Curtis is, I know it sounds silly to say everybody's dangerous, but man, he's dangerous. And he's coming to fight, man. He's coming to take you yeah. out. And uh, and you're always so much fun, Jack, man. I really, I like, Thank oh, you. I like your whole game, but I am a I guy. So I really do. Yeah. Man, there's some, I seen some, I mean, some of your submissions, which you got on uh, Branch and your guillotines and oh my God. Yeah. Well, you did, how Jack Ray got out of that? I, to this day, I would <laughs> never know. I'll never know. I, I, you can't keep uh, that. Cause no, I was, it's I was, crazy. I was, it's crazy. But I can't wait to see what you pull off this weekend, man. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, good talking to you, Jack. And, uh, you know, congrats on Elise. I'm glad you have a fight. Like, I'm, I'm glad that the fight didn't go away. Uh, even though your opponent yeah. changed, I'm happy you're still co main. And uh, we'll talk to you again, man. It's always a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having All me, right. as always. All right. Take thank care, you, uh, Jack Hermanson. Thank you very much. Well. Oh, Jimmy, you were going to bring up the topics. That's what you said. You go, before news, Matt, let's bring up the topics and, and the fighters of the round table. I go, Jimmy, remember when I told you? I go, Jimmy, don't embarrass me. No, but I wanted to bring it up. Okay, um, go ahead, Jimmy. Fighters of the round table. Obviously, it premiered on July 18th, the day before. Uh, I did not get a birthday call from Matt Sarah on the 19th. Ah! Uh, no, no, not important. Um, it's uh, featuring, oh. of course, uh, Forrest and Rashad Bisping, Matt and Juliana Pena. What a great lineup that is. Of all people kind of celebrating friends' birthdays and yes. Stop, stop, stop. What? stop. No, I don't I don't want you to plug it anymore. I'll do it. Why? Anyway. I, I want to plug July 18th. Am, Jimmy, what? Jimmy, 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 I am such a bad friend. Much like I, I'm almost becoming you because you never call me on events like that. Um I don't No, think I, I don't. Know. I, I, I didn't. I, I was. I was. I was in the hospital when on I your just, birthday. Jimmy, <laughs> first of all, happy birthday! Happy I'm just kidding. Birthday. I'm kidding. Happy birthday. birthday! I seen it on Instagram, and I go, I can't wait to sing you happy. <gasps> Jimmy, happy birthday to you, my little Jimmy Bird. This is why you brought it up. Thank this you. is why you brought yes, it up. Yes, it is. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy I know you hear me. I'm not going to do it. No, I don't love my birthday. I, I actually find it depressing. I'm older and fatter. I, I never love my birthday. It's always nice. The sentiments are nice, but I'm happy it's done. It's a number. Yeah. It is a number. How old are you? 54. I'm old, Matt. Yeah, Jimmy, you're not old. I'm too old oh. to take jujitsu. No, well, that's not true. That's not true. Right. I was I I stopped down. I've been stopping down at my school, just yelling at people. Last night I was teaching young Marcus, who's got a fight coming up. And, okay. Uh, young Marcus helps out around the academy. He's a, he's a good kid, and I taught him the flying arm lock. I showed him the proper grips, and he's very acrobatic. Yeah. So acrobatic. I, I, I showed him. I say it right. Yeah. Acrobatic. acrobatic yeah. 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 So I just showed him. You know, first jump the guard, jump the guard, proper collar tie. And then I go, all right, now, armpit, put your head to touch his thigh. Boom, boom, I'll touch his quad. And dude, he was doing this thing. It made me so happy. I like that kid. Yeah. Anyway, so Jimmy. Yes, sir. I, You know what I'm doing tonight? We'll get back to that round table what? thing that's available on YouTube. Yes. And me, former champions. We'll talk about that in a second. But tonight, Jimmy, tonight in Long Island, I am going to uh, have dinner with my two pizzeria bosses when I was 17 years old. Wow. The, the, the famous place, that pizzeria, Pizza Amore, is, uh, not, it's not there anymore. It's a different it's pizzeria, it's the name, but spot, spot is the, is the same. On Newbridge Road uh, in, in uh, East Meadow, Long Island. That, that store, that you know that changed the whole uh, trajectory of my life. You know that. The pizza place. Yes. You know that's the fight I got into when I was going to go into the military and I ended up having that fight with that guy and ended up, you know, got a, in trouble and that they didn't let me in the military. Remember that? Yeah, I mean, it's a good thing they didn't. 
like, good, Jimmy, it, that fight changed the course yeah. of my life. So I haven't seen these guys in at least a decade. I haven't seen these guys. And, uh, you know, I know them since I was 30 years ago. Ain't that nice? Yeah. When I showed I was 17, they were 36. I'm 48. Now they're 66. Wow. So I'm going out to eat with these two fucking gentlemen tonight. Oh, that's really nice. Them, Jimmy. That's nice. Hey, listen. I'm happy to still alive. Uh, <laughs> they smoked like cigarettes back then. They're two funny Italian guys. Uh, so wait, let's talk about some fights really quick. So you're, you're by the way, 260,000 views, your thing. I just checked it already. July 18th, a day and a half, it's been up. 260,000 is very, very uh, impressive. That's awesome. And it's called The Round Table? Yeah, with yourself and Juliana and Rashad and and uh, Forrest and Bisping. That's a great lineup. But everyone, everyone of you guys is a good talker. We had fun. Yeah, Jimmy. of course. We had fun, had some wine. I like the outtakes at the end with me and Bisping. Is up. Oh, we were laughing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so people, check that out. Check that out. Uh, all right, listen. Uh, this weekend, UFC Fight Night, Blaze versus Aspinall. That alone yeah. is a fucking insane fight. It's like Tom Aspinall, nobody's got a quite. He's got such nice jujitsu, too. Yeah. And now he's fighting Curtis Blaze. This is the biggest test for him to date. Yeah. There's a great card all around, Jimmy. Yes. This great is, card. Curtis is a fucking, uh, he's a different beast, though, uh, when he gets you up against the cage. I know Aspinall uh can fight but uh and, and i know he has a uh, good grappling but yeah right let's see how he does against curtis plates uh the great main event and now this starts prelim start at noon eastern time espn plus because this is the 23rd obviously at the o2 in london three o'clock eastern time now i will be in denver friday and saturday which means i can watch these because normally i'm doing shows saturday night i can watch these fights nice and early in the afternoon in denver i'm very psyched that it's an afternoon fight me. Yes, buddy. That's nice. Yes. Boy, you man. It's like a text you dirty. Um, Jack Romanson versus Chris Curtis. Patty Pimplett. The whole the whole card is excellent. Top to bottom. The whole card is great. Craig and uh Uzdemir is the start. Of course, Goldie McCann, Gustafson Krylov, um, you know, uh, Pimblett, Jordan Levitt, and then of course Comain, Jack uh, Hermanson, Chris Curtis. And Blades against Aspinall as the main event this Saturday. Prelim started at uh, 12 o'clock, so if you can, check. That's Eastern time, so if you're in California, wake up at 9 and watch the prelims. Hey, um, I'm excited for the con. Uh, yeah, me too. Uh, Nate, is Nate Diaz and Kamzat uh, Shemaya's fighting? They said that they're going to sign it or it's, it's close to being. I never believe anything uh, I, until uh, they said it's for 279 but until it's actually, they say they've not been signed yet, but they both verbally agreed. And none of that means anything to me. Nothing um, to you. Verbal agreements don't mean anything to me until it's actually signed. All right. I hope it gets signed. Hey, man. I like your style. I, want, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, people will count just say, it, oh, they're feeding Nate to Kamzat. I don't know about that, man. I mean, I mean, he, he can weather storms, you know, he I can, mean? I do think that's a very tough fight for Nate, but again, if it's, five, if it's a five round fight. Yeah. Nate also, uh, as a veteran, a veteran veteran, he knows exactly how to deal with anything. Anybody's, you know what I mean? Like he's a guy who's seen everything. Um, if that's a main event, I'd be very interested to, uh, to see that, but only if it happens and I won't get excited until it happens. I do think that's a tougher fight for Nate. But again, who knows? I mean, what was the, his last fight? Uh, he got, uh, who the fuck did he fight last time? Oh, was it, was it Lawler? He patched it off the necks with guillotines and Wilson. I mean, he's got, you know, he's got jiu uh, Leon, Leon Edwards was uh, Nate's last fight? No, Nate, no, he put him, dude, he got him. People remember, what they remember about that fight is that he, he hit him right on the chin. And he had him wobbly, wobbly leg pointed at him. That's the, that one moment. Out of the whole 25 minute fight, people are like, yo, man, fucking Nate Diaz. I love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that, kept his, that kept everything alive for him. Like, you know what I mean? Just showing, hey, man, look, I'm, after all this, you're trying to get a shutout by trying to beat me every round. Look at this. If this is the street, if this is real life, look at your wobbly leg. You're dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like, he salvaged something out of it. Um, but again, I, I I think that's a that's a tough fight for him. I I, I don't think he goes down fast, but I, I don't know what you do to 
to keep Shemaev off you long enough to hope that his gas tank runs out. Are you uh, making any picks on this fucking thing or no? Um, I'm going to take Curtis Blades over Aspinall. I'm going to take Curtis Blades. I think he finds a way to stop him in the third. I, I think that he just exhausts guys. Um, and I just think he's relentless. Uh, I, I think he will will find a way. Again, could fucking Aspinall drop him? Sure. But I'm taking Blades third round stoppage. I'm going to say rear naked choke Tom Aspinall. Okay. I'm going to say that we didn't see his grappling yet. You understand? I mean, you know, to the degree that we're going to. I think Hermanson gives uh, Chris Curtis his first loss in the UFC. Um, and again, maybe I don't know how, how into training Chris Curtis was before this fight got announced. Um, but it is a short notice fight. I think Hermanson, uh, I'll say it takes him by decision. Cause again, I don't think Curtis had a full camp unless he was training for the fight. I don't know about it. Uh, I don't know if he did or not, but I'm going to say submission Jack Hermanson. I believe he's probably going to get a back take also. Okay. Or maybe, maybe even a leg. I don't know, man. He's got some really nice jujitsu. Maybe a guillotine. He's got some guy. He's going to get a sub. And uh, I think he's going to get it maybe first round. Okay. You know? Yeah, it's crazy shit, I say. I, 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 I predict some crazy shit. Uh, listen, Patty. Patty Pimplett versus Jordan Levitt. Uh, leave it. Yep. Uh, I'm going to say that um, Patty's going to get a second round stop. It strikes. That's great. We'll do those three. I thought second round strikes too, but now I don't want to say the same thing. So I think what's going to happen is because he had a sub and a uh, TKO in the first and the fight before that was a uh, first round sub. I think that he goes the distance. I think he wins by submission. Levitt is uh, 10 and one. I think Pimblet wins by decision. All right. Well, that's what you think. I'm only kidding. Yep. Jay, that's good. Listen, um, did you know that Frankie Edgar is eyeing a Madison Square Garden retirement bout at UFC 281? Did yeah, you know he's that? talking about Dominic Cruz. Yeah, I mean, that would be a fucking an amazing fight. Oh. I hate to see Frankie retire, but I mean, you know, that's I, I a damn wanna, good place to have your last know, fight. I mean, you can't ask for a better career. Sooner or later, it always has to end, you know, but uh, yep. who doesn't love Frankie Edgar? Yeah. You know, um, is he still doing that podcast? I don't know. I am I do not listen well, to podcasts. It's about time I'm back on it. I don't disagree. I mean, why am I inviting myself, though? I well, shouldn't have to. I went out there. I thought we had a good time. I, I thought you did, too. I, I think I never got invited back. Well, Frankie thought different. Jimmy. <laughs> 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 Jimmy, what do you so what do you got going on? Let's get out of here. What do you got going on? I'm, nothing, I'm not doing I usually do the fat black pussycat on Wednesdays, but tonight I'm doing Gutfeld on Fox. So I will not be taping anything tonight other than Gutfeld. And then check me in Denver this Friday, Saturday at the Comedy Works, one of the best clubs in the country. And I'll talk to you over the weekend. Jimmy, I know you're about to hang up, but you know, I wonder I watched the other day, I rewatched, you know, sometimes I put things on in the background. And I put on dread with um call call urban. And I told you how much I like that movie. And I'm like, why do I like it so much? What is, and there's a certain thing. I like character development. And the psychic, the psychic, the girl, he calls rookie. He calls her rookie. She's like a mutant. She can read minds and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's testing her the whole time. In the very beginning, I would, this, your, your assessment starts now. Are you ready? You know, are you ready? And then she, you know, he doesn't, that's all he says to her. And she he looks at her and they go. And then during the fight, during the during the day, right throughout this this movie, now they're about to go in their first fucking about to kick open the door. There's about to be some action. He looks at her again, right? It's the second time. He says it three times throughout the movie, and he asks her, "You ready?" Yeah. He goes, "You don't look ready," and she's just like, "It's just the adrenaline, sir." You know, she wasn't ready. She was she was she was she's green, very green. And then there's the third time. Now by the third time, they've been through some shit. They've yeah. been through some shit with the mama gang. They've been through fucking hell already. She's a different person. She's a different person towards the end of this movie. So now they're about to go into some other shit towards the end. They're about to get into like a final fucking fight. And he looks at it. He goes, are you ready? And she's just, he goes, you look ready. And Jimmy, I just, right, Jimmy, I don't want to get emotional. My hair, or my nipples are hot. Jimmy. Right. Like, look at that nipple. Look. Look, Jimmy. Honestly, yeah, it is. Looks it's hard. Good. You can't fake that. No, you can't. You can't fake it. 
You're going to watch the movie. She was ready towards the end of the movie. Like, you know what I mean? You, you, you look ready. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't do it. No, but yeah. I understand. You, judge Red, you can't see his face. Sure. He's like, are, he's like, are you ready? He always has like a Batman voice. Are you ready? You're ready. You look ready. But Jimmy, it's very, it's, so it's like, the, so I'm like, I didn't really, he asked that three times. And the, through the, you see the development of this character. Are you going to watch the movie now? <sighs> I don't know. All right. Well, listen, thank you. You are, we are out of here. That's what I want to end on. Okay. Jimmy, I have so much fun with you. I will I talk to you during the weekend. All right, pal. Have a good week. I'll talk to you. Jimmy, 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 hold on. Let's not end like that. Do you want to maybe FaceTime in like a day or two? It's, I feel like I feel like this week went too too fast. We FaceTime on you Saturday think, during the fights. I think you I know you think two days a week is plenty. But I need a little more Jimmy. I can like use that. a little more Matt. I'm fine with a little more Matt. Uh, maybe not FaceTime, but I'm calling you by the weekend. Feel free. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.